Morning to review a decision last night that broke the news as the federal government agreed for 110 percent increment on the 30,000 naira minimum wage, increasing it to 70,000 naira. Now, this morning, we're also joined by Barrister Clifford Thomas uh, to share his thoughts as we expand the conversation. Good morning to you, Barrister. Uh, good morning, Beto. Good morning, TJK. Good morning, uh, viewers out there. You're welcome, and um, let's latch on the seatbelt and see how far it goes. <laughs> well, Barrister, uh, we have a very common uh, news headline across national dailies, and of course, it is on the national new national minimum wage. The federal government, the NLC, the TUC, and uh, the OPS have all come to a conclusion to pay the Nigerian worker a minimum wage of seventy thousand naira. What is your reaction to this? Well, when you say the federal government and labor, as organized labor, uh, have come together to um, give to Nigeria a new minimum wage, the question would be, is it a national minimum wage as a benchmark, as a standard for all employers of labor, or for just public servants and those in the organized private sector, banks, oil companies, and those are actually organized. But some of us are in the informal sector, so what they would directly say is the unorganized private sector. We are not supported by government to pay, to, we don't have tax rebates, we don't have um, the necessary amenities and everything to actually help uh, employ people and get services offered. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that distinction has not been made. Is it a national minimum wage for all categories of workers and if you're saying it's a national minimum wage for all categories of workers are you also saying that the structure within the civil service is what the nano businesses should do or those who have uh, about five persons in their employ or about ten and does the government ever bother to know how these people survive how these people actually get what they should get to to move on now we should be able to also ask ourselves in truth aside from what has the government done the question is will seventy thousand naira minimum wage be enough for the workers no even if you give the workers one million naira minimum wage it won't still be enough because inflation will erode the values you have raised from there um the electricity and the service bills he pays uh, no fuel. I, I think the basic thing shouldn't even be to raise minimum wage. The basic thing should have been, let us put the nursing infrastructure in place. We should be able to have steady and affordable electricity. We should be able to have um, the the uh, refineries working so that we could refine our products here. We should be able to also um, categorize, as it were, the um, crude we sell, the ones we go into contract with, the ones that have been used to borrow to borrow monies from outside the country. Right now, I don't know how much crude Nigeria uh, produces. Um, we we mine oil. We don't know the quantity. Except the IOCs tell us. The companies, the the majors, the oil majors are the ones that actually tell Nigeria that this is how much crude we produce. We don't measure it. We don't follow it up. Now, uh, Barrister Clifford, you are the Executive Director of Foundation for Civic Education, Human Rights and Development Advances. You also double as President Informal Sector Alliance. In your capacity as the President Informal Sector Alliance, what would you say or what is your take particularly now uh, with regards to uh, the new minimum wage not being clearly uh distinguished whether it covers all nigerian workers or it just covers uh workers who work for the government civil well, servants well i would think uh, that's um a distinction the government has not made and right now every category of worker will want to ask their employers this is a new minimum wage this is what you must pay me the implication is that a lot of private persons in private sector won't be able to pay and that will lead to rationalization and loss of jobs for the for every category of nigeria aside from 
the presidents and governors and those who are covered who, who draw their funding from governments the deep pocket of government you notice that the cost of goods and services of products in the market would have increased it had already increased before now they claim that we have 40.6 uh, double digit inflation rate it's not so we actually have something above that the NBS the National Bureau for Statistics is doing its best to actually give us some some I wanted to say state manage but I would rather say conservative figure so that we don't create a crisis in the country because right now as it is anything that happens in Nigeria affects stock affects shares affects a whole lot of things but for those of us in the informal sector we are crying we are languishing we don't have support the government saying that in fact the the cng bosses labor has stated categorically that is for public servants it's not for me and you it doesn't cover us you go in there with your id card showing which department of government you work for so we are saying that the over 93 95 percent of nigerians in the informal sector have not been covered. They, they have not been covered this new minimum wage instead of bringing something good to them has brought something bad so they will groan under this and it's from that large population of that large army of uh, young persons the unemployed the those who are dissatisfied with their jobs that whoever wants to recruit recruit from and when you recruit from this large army you notice that you're spending almost 45 to 60 percent of government revenues on less than three percent of the population but, but how do how do we create um a an atmosphere of inclusivity with regards to uh workers in the informal forward slash private sector well when you say when we say workers in the informal sector we have a lot of them yeah, who nice. are not actually receiving salaries wages. they're not even receiving wages wages is weekly daily weekly or weekly but salaries is monthly now for the pure water seller how does this news affect him that's the man in the informal sector that's the girl in the informal sector for the shoe shiner the cobbler how does this affect him negatively because the co landlords would have increased i'm very sure they don't even need to have a meeting of landlords they would have increased their their, their rents trans commercial uh, transport workers will also increase their rents their their transportation fare now barista let's look at it from this angle as well whilst the national assembly is set to get this bill on tuesday in light of the inflations and increases that we anticipate across commodity markets is some glimmer of hope because we have some sketchy details about that framework which was submitted by the minister of finance and coordinating minister of economy that informed president bolami's decision now the president is also saying that it will be reviewed after a period of three years are you hopeful that in the next three years the economic think tank will be able to bring down inflation thereby giving whatever national minimum wage is achieved a breath of life this these are all high fallopian english they make promises in english and those promises are not fulfilled to say that it will be reviewed in three years I want to crave the indulgence of those who may not believe what I'm saying, that we may not review that national minimum wage in three years. How many promises has government not made? And those governments, I mean, those promises, did, did, were they actually worked on within the time frame? No. There's a mutual distrust between the governor and the governors and those who are governing us. Until that trust is rebuilt, we may not be able to say, take government words or whatever thing government says to be true and correct. We, we have been praying and urging government, please be honest with us so that we can give, we, we give, we donated our trust and gave to you to govern us. But when you say things you cannot fulfill, it becomes a problem to us. We very, we hope very much so that government should be able to review it in three years. But in reviewing it how does it affect i'm very interested in how it affects the common man on the street it's not the palliative they say they are giving 200 trucks per rice. state of rice to states 
and those 200 trucks for for instance if you have like a two point something million persons in your state it comes to about one cup per household and how long will even eat that palliative at what cost what's the alternative for gone what is the real cost of getting that palliative to the people are you not in fact will the real people get it and if the real people even get it let's concede that they get it it amounts to just one cup so now, how long can is, one cup take you and your household now barista you also mentioned building the trust deficit that we have yes the front pages this morning much like the daily sun captured what i see as some leadership by example from the lower legislative chamber the house of representatives where owing to the comments made by the speaker honorable tajidin abbas we are taking a 50 percent pay cut 50 percent pay cut months. of what basic salary or total emolument that's another big question that needs to be answered <laughs> now do you think that whatever this pay cut falls either on their salaries or allowances it might be a step towards many would see the call to cut down the cost of governments well uh, the pay cut let's assume that their basic salary comes to two million which is actually less basic and they take 50 percent pay cut so we're talking a million that's one million uh, they are 360 in the house that's 360 million there for how many constituencies and what do they hope to do with the money have they come up with a plan a structured plan to say we want to put boreholes or do electricity or what 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 do the people really need that we need to give them if we save this if they had talked of their total emoluments for per month and they give it out for six months it would have made sense but all the same we still appreciate them it shows that they know that they're suffering in this country and any legislator who says that they're suffering in this country that the people are suffering is correct will be seen to be correct whether you sack him or remove him from office or not does not detract from the fact that we are suffering now let's leave these fine clothes we wear which is packaging that is suffering and smiling <laughs> yes it's packaging because you don't have what it takes to survive in this economy we don't have it i don't have it and you don't have it because we are all in the informal sector but those who are protected by government they get fear from government they get feeding allowance from government they get all the, including newspaper allowances those are things i had expected them to say our total package for the month we take 50 percent and give to our people 50 percent for one year now, not even six le months le let's narrow it down to the private sector now uh, after the beating that was held uh, yesterday ops made a statement that they cannot pay the new minimum wage without the support of the federal government now from records we know that there are some private sector employers that even pay higher than what the FGP is yes. minimum wage. But now we hear them saying that they can't pay without the federal government support. What sort of support are we talking about here? Well, I think is the the mentality has become a bandwagon mentality. What the government has succeeded, part of what uh, the government has succeeded in doing negatively, is to introduce to the private sector, the organized private sector, the mentality that holds sway in the public sector that no matter how much resources you have in this in your state when you are not allowed to um mine this thing and use them to help develop your state you have to still go back to the federal government at the end of every month to get support to get handouts they call it allocation from the federation's account if nigeria was differently structured in a manner that each state you produce what you have you utilize what you have and send a percentage to the federal government it would have made nigerian states to be more lucrative to be more productive now they have ended up introducing some degree of laziness into the organized private sector some private sector companies they pay higher i agree some oil majors uh, dangote dangote industries limited uh, said uh, they, they they have 30,000 persons in their employ. Some states cannot employ 30,000. But they will lie. 
that they employ more than 50,000 just because they want to glean money from the resources of ghost workers, the monies made by ghost workers. So, as it stands right now, um, the organized private sector asking for government support is in tandem with what they had made the states to become beggars going to, coming to abuja every month to beg for money they get handouts so they are saying they need tax rebates they need tax rebates meanwhile a lot of them are not aligning themselves with the corporate social responsibility proponents of tax regime because uh, you, you you carry out CSR on some communities or doing things, then you will earn tax rebates. Um, they need the CNG bus. They want to keep their own buses because they don't want to pay transport by fuel or uh, diesel to power their, their, their transportation system for staff. They need electricity tariffs reduced for them. So they will need a lot of concessions to be able to pay 110 percent increase as was claimed i don't know that statistics may not be properly correct but let's assume and concede it is correct for them to increase that in the last couple of years the operational environment of industries and factories in nigeria have been very inclement and not friendly so how do you expect them struggling with the whole of these variables to be able to pay a new minimum wage you have brought out. So I, I feel for them, but I feel most for those of us in the private sector. Oh. Organize, I mean, for those of us in the informal sector. Well, on, on the front page of the uh, Daily Independent, uh, there's a report that the decision has been met with a lot of mixed reactions mm. or a, a hit back by most Nigerian workers who are saying that they can survive on 30,000 Naira. And they, they went further to accuse uh, the Joe Ajero-led NLC of compromise and uh, calling them sellouts. What do you make of this, Barrister? I think um, Nigeria is a very difficult country to administer. Um, Nigerians, over the years, the interregnum by the military has affected us because we have a military-industrial complex. We can't trust anybody again. And we feel that anybody who is leading us at whatever level is uh, has come out to lead because he wants to compromise the entire system and gain uh, something for himself, some parochial interest. But no matter how sincere somebody is, um, leading Nigerians at any level, Nigerians view the person with suspicion because of the military industrial complex. And over the years, our politicians too have not made matters better because they have um they have presented held themselves out not to be trusted a politician tells you i am fasting because i want us to have i, I want to give out one plate of food every day but you notice that he's eating five times a day if he gives that you are supposed to eat three times a day uh, i don't know who even brought that kind of concept because i think the best thing for for a human being the most healthy thing for him to eat once a day and eat fruit and vegetables and now that we have dmo these things are not really helping us well, well talk, talk, so talking about the trust deficit has made nigerians not to trust their leaders now to accuse the labor leaders i i'm not holding brief for them but i would want to reason that they have gone through this process these throws of negotiations very um, it's been very difficult for them. No matter how, they may look fresh, but of course, they, they, they have their private earnings. So, for workers to accuse them will be most uncharitable. Now, um, mixed feelings, yes, we are not comfortable that um, this thing has been increased to the point where nothing has been done. It will increase for workers, for public servants. The concept of this negotiation was for public servants, not for Nigeria. Unfortunately, whoever wants to make it look like it is for all Nigerians uh, will not be helping Nigerians. Again, I want to ask, because we appear to have forgotten that aspect. Let our earnings be based on productivity. 
why can't we run a per hour billable service such that your productivity determines what you earn and don't allow now you guys came out here as early as five six or five and you have to walk around the day around the clock for more than 10 hours or about 12 hours if your wage is calculated per hour you notice that you get better compensation than for somebody to sit down and say you earn salaries salaries is a payment for your labor per month and the payment for labor per month is not commensurate with half what the person has even put in so uh we're all victims of the process uh, but it's not the government of today that started this and it is not also our fault that we went to school came out and chose to work for people or work for government but we must look at the productivity quotient what is the average nigerian public servant contributing to the national economy we have not asked ourselves that question until we ask ourselves that question and get the right answer we won't be able to give something common. how would they come out to say uh, we are not satisfied with seventy thousand? do they know what it took the federal government to be able to say okay we're giving these sacrifices and i bet them i want to assure them if the government begins to sack some persons you can't blame the government because the government must strike an equilibrium between what we earn and what we can pay now has the government even come out to say on a state-by-state -state basis these are the number of civil servants available in the public service we don't have that information until we have that information and look we must all join the fed the government and the people and labor to calculate what the the total amount of money that will be spent on wages so uh, allow state governments allow the private sector allow whichever employer to negotiate how much he can pay don't force it on people don't force it on states some states thirty thousand they couldn't pay some states will go bankrupt or they will reduce their worker size by about 20 30 percent that is what i see coming to happen now barrister clifford thomas has set the grounds for an argument that the federal government needs to also check the productivity index in public service with cases of ghost workers and workers who do not necessarily earn their wages suggesting that nigeria can borrow relief from other climes where you clock in your hours are accumulated and then you get paid for the value you bring to the table. Now, whilst this is an important subject of debate, the Guardian newspaper also looks at what the level of compliance would be as Nigerians are faced with a purchasing power parity decline. The Guardian gives us an infographics this morning looking at our wages in Naira as it has spanned over the years to its equivalent in dollars. We're told that the Nigerian minimum wage value in dollars in 2019 was $88. In 2020, it dropped to 79 In 2021, it also further declined to $63. And now, despite 70,000 Naira, should you change your salary to be able to acquire services or sponsor your children's school fees abroad, it's equivalent to $45. Now, you see, it's juxtaposed against the cost of 50 kg bag of rice. And from 2020, a 50 kg bag of rice <coughs> increased in price from 26,000. It is now at a value of 85,000 naira, according to the quotation as graciously presented by The Guardian this morning. Now, the challenge going into the future would be many people will now be looking at the CBN in its next MPC. Would it jerk up the NPR even further? In a way, it says it's trying to squeeze liquidity and also fight inflation. You have also argued mm -hmm. that the NBS statistics might not be 40% as we hear for food inflation and well over 38.10% for headline inflation. How, how do the economic jug ahead? We, we see the Presidential Economic Council as well coming to the table to look at some of the measures that can allow our wage value compete with the commodity uh, prices. Bito, you are speaking like somebody who went to Harvard harvard or one of these business schools and uh, we don't need those kind of people to run nigeria's economy the average trader in a barrier market can run nigeria the person at out at uh, dumota can run the nigerian economy because he understands the the interplay of forces between demand and supply 
and with that knowledge he does not even think of the variable of borrowing because going to borrow makes the imf and the world bank to give you conditionalities that subjects your economy to perpetual slavery and poverty and poverty has been weaponized here because whatever policy they introduce to go before you collect money they tell you you will do this you will do this and once they give you those conditions you notice at the end of the day if a very reasonable person does the analysis you notice that they are not helping your economy to grow they are actually positioning your economy as leeches that they can hold onto your economy and draw perpetually until you die dying here becomes bankruptcy the nigerian economy may not be doing particularly very well it would be it could be in the neighborhood of bankruptcy if it has not entered the room of bankruptcy now the government is trying its best introduce tax here try to cut here try to improve here they are even surprised that the economy is the government is working that our current economy is moving but one of the things you see, when you talk of balancing inflation and all of this, we need to increase the productivity, the production level in Nigeria so that we can export. We shouldn't be exporting raw materials. We should be manufacturing and exporting finished products. But what do you need to, to, to increase manufacturing? Yeah. What you need is constant electricity. The installed capacity for electricity production in Nigeria is 12,300 megawatts. And Nigeria's, Nigeria actually needs a minimum of 40, 42,000 megawatts of electricity. Who shows up that deficit? Now, some of these distribution companies, I have been an advocate against the shenanigans of distribution companies. The transmission, Genkos generate electricity transmit through the TCN, through the Transmission Company of Nigeria. The discos are supposed to collect this electricity, but they, they won't collect. Assuming, um, assuming um, 100 megawatts is given, you will notice that they collect and receive only about 30 megawatts. They charge for 100 megawatts. I don't know whether that explanation is... is 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 clear yes it is and it's now, coming at a time when the IMF is also recommending a removal of electricity subsidies that is what we are saying that our borrowing and over borrowing and over borrowing has made us a slave to the lender the bible says it it's so clear it's there in the holy rates in the quran is there you are a slave to whoever you borrow from and whatever it tells you if he comes you you tell him sorry if if he has any problems or any challenge you don't only sympathize with him you also join him now, in that problem let's, let's, so let's... our over dependence on borrowing has made the world bank and imf to give us conditionalities that creates poverty and weaponizes poverty what what you just said sorry please is that the imf is saying that you should remove electricity subsidy subsidy electricity subsidy is there in the u.s food subsidy agricultural subsidy is there in the u.s and in europe but they enjoy their own and use tax to cover it yeah they say remove it so that there can be social upheavals they plan protests across the country people have taken a leave from kenya people have taken a leave from the arab spring people have taken a leave that it is possible in from uh, the ensas protest now those are creations expected creations projectiles of the world bank i am and imf and because we need to always kuto to them we take whatever policies they give us whatever policy suggestion we implement them here without looking at the socio-economic and political milieu of nigeria what is the mentality of the average nigerian we have not looked at it yet. Well, let's let's bring it down to the grassroots. Since we are talking about the economy, we are talking about food and how it affects the common man. Uh, now we have a new minimum wage, uh, Barista. Do how much of an effect do you think uh, this can have on uh, some market forces? Do you see the prices of food going up? Uh, people in the uh, informal sector might not really know what is going on in the formal sector. 
you know, all they would hear is the government has increased workers' salary. Mm. So let's increase the prices of our commodities. Do you see this happening in the next uh, couple of weeks, months coming ahead? It, it happened. It started happening long before today. Feels they were right. envisaging the increase. Why, why do you think we got to 40.6% uh, inflation rate, according to MBS? Which I say is more than that. I am very sure it's close to about 50-something percent. Now, they had started increasing. And it's, it's like the Ipman people, Independent uh, Marketers Association of Nigeria, in their filling stations. If they hear When anything, they heard the subsidy was removed, the next day, petrol prices also went up. It went up. Even if there's a quarrel, if there's a quarrel in the energy sector, in the oil sector, you notice that they will increase it. They will hold their fuel, they will hold their products and increase it. Why? Because they understand very well the, the interplay between demand and supply. That when the demand is high, their price must go high. So they reduce the supply to ensure that we suffer. Now, the effect of the minimum, new minimum wage is that Nigerians should brace up for the worst. Nigeria should brace up for the worst. Uh, a bag of rice from where I come from, in uh, where my station in uh, Akwaibo, is about $90,000, If it's uh, 85 in Abuja, then, uh, well, Abuja people should be grateful to God for it, uh, for having 85. Um, when you look at what the Guardian said, that um, in, in 2001 or 17, it was about $60 in uh, right now we are at 45 dollars udoji there was a commission in 1973 to increase minimum wage for workers it increased minimum wage one year after when the review was done the civil servant the public servant said that they were better off before the minimum wage was increased and that's going to be the situation now a dollar was 50 kobo Assuming the minimum wage was 75 naira, that would have been $150. So $150 times the amount of money a dollar goes for today. You notice that workers were better off in 1973 than in 2024. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Barrister. It's been a wonderful time uh, speaking with you on this issue.